looking at the depth chart, Kalen DeLoach, Sharon Duty, with Amari Gaynor at stud. We heard you guys gush a lot about Gaynor early in the preseason, but what put DeLoach in a position to compete for a starting role there? Uh, consistency, athleticism. Um, made the plays that came to him in those scrimmages and throughout practice. And, you know, it's just it's an ongoing thing. But right now, those guys are both going to help us play football at that position. Um, and the Kalen Brooks has really come on, too. You know, it's you know not possible to get three guys all in the game at the same time. But, you know, there'll even be time that maybe both of Amari and KD could be in the game at the same time as well. So, uh, but Kalen's really come on. Um, Amari's doing a good job. The Kalen's doing a good job as well. But, you know, just the consistency that Kalen's done and the work he's put on over the last couple of months um, has helped him gain some gain some reps. Next question will be Irish from Morgan. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you guys have a, a lot of different options at a lot of positions, so I'm sure this will be fluid. Um, do you look for opportunities, in, even in a season opening game, to if guys have earned playing time but maybe aren't the first guy out there, do you look for opportunities to get guys in, or do you? want to roll with the main guys for as much as possible? Yeah, I mean, we want to win the game, and we want to play the best we can. And so that looks a lot of different ways, right? I mean, we're not going to just play one play. You know, we could play 50. We could play 100. Um, so, you know, we've got to just have a plan that we're trying to win the game. And so that is infinite, but it's also got a finite at the end of the game, right? So we're trying to play every guy that earns the right to help us win the game and do that in a way that the guys that we think can do it the most play the most, uh, but don't play too much that they can't help us at the end of the game too. So, I mean, fluid's a tough word, um, but I mean, they, there's a plan with every one of these guys as far as how it's going to play, especially one through quarter two. And then we reevaluate as we go. But I mean, I've been a part of a game that we've had six three and outs to start the game. We've had a 14 play drive in the first series. So, you know, it's all got a plan, but you've got to be fluid enough to adapt based on how the game goes. Um, but we've all these names that are on this depth chart are going to play some sort of way, you know, whether it's three, four, two units in the kicking game, whether it's one unit whether it's third down, whether it's first, second, third down, whatever that all is, whether it's as a returner, whether we put them on an offense, like there's a lot of different things that are going to happen with these guys. And uh, again, we're just we're trying to win the game. We're trying to play our best. And, um, you know, a lot of moving parts still. But, yeah. Next will be Perry from Tomahawk Nation. Coach, uh, Georgia Tech still hasn't settled on a quarterback as far as I'm aware. Um, how much does it benefit you all to have a quarterback room with a varying amount of talents when the same situation is kind of replicated over there? They have players who are good at running, some are good at just, you know, consistent system quarterback. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the question just are having a bunch of quarterbacks here, you're saying? Yeah, how does the, the benefit of having quarterbacks with a varying amount of talents uh, prepare you in approaching a team that has the same kind of situation where you don't really know? Yeah. You're yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, I mean, quarterback happens to be the position, right? Because there's only one of them out there. So, and usually when you put a plan together, who the other quarterback is, is a big part of a plan because he touches the ball every play. Um, you know, I mean, I've coached in games where they've played and rolled quarterbacks. We played in games that it's a lone starter. I mean, it's all just part of it. You know, it's, I try not to get too caught up in it all. I mean, they're going to put somebody back there and, you know, based on how they played offense in the past, that guy, you know, is going to run the ball, he's going to throw the ball, he's going to read certain things, there's going to be RPOs. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. And, you know, my job is to make sure, and our job as a staff is to make sure it's clear enough to our players that, like, listen, there's going to be a quarterback back there, and these are the plays that we're probably going to get, and this is how we're going to defend it. And if it goes this way, and we thought it was going that way, this is how we got to react to it. And just try to talk about it in very broad, terms and then give them specifics to how it's going to affect them and um, got to have the ability to adapt and adjust as things change, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, they could not tell us to the first play of the game. I don't care. I mean, whatever it is, you know, we just got to be ready to, to defend what they're going to do. Next will be Aslan Hagavandi from Morshan. Coach Fuller, we've, we've heard so many good things about Travis Jay, but Renardo Green's a guy who seems to be kind of level with him. So what does that say about what Renardo has shown you guys through camp? Yeah, there's nothing about Renardo that's level. He's done a great job. I mean, you go watch him from the, that third spring practice that we finished until now, um, not doing anything negative on the th first three that we had in spring. But from that point till now, 
I mean, he's grown as much as anybody on our defense. You know, just showing up, um, playing with great energy and effort, um, trying to study, you know, and put himself in the right place. But whether it's playing man coverage, zone coverage, tackling the football, uh, becoming a blitzer, like we put him in a lot of different positions. Um, you know, Renardo has done a great job. And, um, you know, he's going to be on the football field a lot come Saturday. And uh, we, we have high expectations for him. Hey, Coach, there were, I mean, obviously a lot of guys, judging from the depth chart, in contention for that uh, cornerback spot. Jerry and I know is listed against Asante for whatever that's worth. I guess, how impressed have you been with how he's come in? I mean, into a crowded room and really established himself quickly as a transfer player. Yeah, I mean, he's played football. You know, I mean, we've had guys on here, you know, you know, look at Corona. Asante's played a lot of football. You know, Akeem Dent's played a lot of football. Jarion, Miko's played football. You know, Jarvis. You know, some Carlos has played, you know, other positions, you know what I mean? So, you know, they've all kind of on the same level from a standpoint. They've all played some. Uh, Sante obviously having the most playing time. But, you know, you know, listen, guys have been dinged up. Guys have come back. You know, it's all that. But Jaron showed good consistency, um, you know. So, I mean, you know, he's going to go out there and, you know, hopefully battle his tail off like he has the last couple months since he's been here. Uh, but... You know, he won't want to be the only one, but, you know, he's done a nice job. He's, he's coachable. Um, he's made his one-on-one -on -one plays. Um, you know, we got to keep improving at some things that, that he knows of, but, you know, we're happy with him, where he's at right now. And, you know, he's the type of young man that I know he is. You know, tomorrow he'll just show up and have a great Tuesday practice. Hey Adam, looking at the depth chart at defensive tackle, you got four guys listed on the two deep that have started meaningful games in, in big time football uh, programs. So just how much of a luxury is it to have have that that sort of depth and, and talent at that position? Oh, it's huge, and you know, you know, we got True Thompson and Malcolm Ray. That we, I mean, we just don't put all the names down here, but I mean, you know, it's. You put these names in bold, maybe they go out first play, maybe they don't. But I mean, you know, especially at that position, I mean, it's such a high effort contact position that, you know, you want quality players. But I mean, you're only going to put players on the field that you think can help you win the game. Um, you know, and now obviously the fifth guy maybe not be as good as the first guy at everything, but there's certain things he's going to bring to the table that you're going to try to get him in in those situations, you know, and then there's a, it's a long game. You got to be able to keep guys fresh and play with the high effort that you're trying to get out of that position. Um, so, I mean, to have, you know, the six guys that we have, I mean, it's, it's huge. And, you know, hopefully that pays dividends, not only in the, in the first game, but throughout the season. So, you know, listen, there'll be times we'll put two guys on the two D tackles. There'll be times we put three D tackles in the game. There'll be times we put one, you know, um, but to have, the six guys we have, those four that you mentioned, and, and you put Malcolm and True with that group, I think it gives us a solid depth up the middle that we've got to make sure shows up through all four quarters. I wanted to sneak in two questions that I could, Coach. One is, um, with Travis J, I know you guys were excited about what you saw from him in the spring uh, and then early in camp. Um, I guess, has he continued to develop it? And the fact that you guys have him potentially playing two safety positions, uh, how difficult is that? Um, and then also with Hamza, and I know Hamza's worked really hard to be able to get back. How has he handled not being able to get back for this first game? And uh, has he been a help to the other safeties, even though he's not being able to play? Yeah, um, Travis is listed at two spots, but you know Ray Woody can play both spots. Um, Renardo, I mean, even even Jaden. I mean, Jaden's played two spots. Cyrus Fagan has played three spots in the secondary. So, you know, how we coach it. Um, we try to create flexibility um, because, again, you know, if you're a backup at a spot, um, but the other backup isn't as good as you, hopefully the guy at one spot can play the other spot. I mean, you're trying to get your best players on the field as often as you can. Uh, now, if it slows them down, they can't play fast, they can't play smart. You probably got to rearrange it a little bit, you know. But you know, Travis, you know, he's not perfect yet. You know, there's still a lot of football that has to happen to him. Um, and you're trying to squeeze out that football having to happen on game days. Uh, but, you know, Travis has shown a lot of flexibility in, in doing a lot of good things. We, we start him out at corner. Uh, we've moved him to safety because we think it gives us the best chance to put our best guys in the best position to, to play. And, um, you know, Travel played both safety spots. 
Um, you know, he'll return kicks and punts. He'll play on other kick units for us. You know, you may see him at nickel sometimes too. I mean, you know, Travis is a natural football player that, you know, he'll get a lot of playing time here this fall. And then the second half is of the question, you know, I hate that Ham can't line up with us this first game, and but he's doing everything he can. Um, we're trying to hold him back a little bit, um, which I, I don't think he likes, but he respects. Uh, but Ham's been a great teammate, you know, and just seeing him grow and his um, his knowledge and just how he's doing things, you know, he's never somebody, hey, I got to check on Ham. I know he's not involved, you know, in team at reps or, you know, but he's always there, you know, and he's there for, you know, just support and, you know, energy and, you know, he's a, he's a smart football player and, you know, I'm just, I know he's chomping at the bit and he'll be, he'll be back here on the field before we know it. Coach Norvell talked about how he just has all these sort of contingency plans in, in case anything arises in, in this sort of day and age of coaching football with health and, and player personnel stuff. So with all the uncertainty that, that every sort of team is undergoing this season, what does it do for the psyche of these 19 to 20 year old kids when a, when a guy who's just detail oriented and, and focused on the little things is Mike Norvell their head coach? Um, explain the question one more time, I'm sorry. With so many things being uncertain, it seems that Coach Norvell is a guy that plans for pretty much everything. So when you have a guy like that as your leader and you're a 19, 20-year-old football player, I mean, what does it kind of do for your uh, emotional state or your preparation when you have a guy like that leading? Hopefully it exudes confidence. You know, you, know, you, you hope that's what happens. Um, listen, you know, remember when we were 18 and 19, I mean, you, you have these, the, these distant goals that you want to attain yesterday. And then these things called life come up every day and you're like, man, I'll never get to this goal, you know, and then they accomplish one thing and they think they're already at the goal, you know, and it's a constant rhythm of trying to keep our guys in the lane of just work and whether they've accomplished whatever the goal was or they feel like they'll never accomplish it. It's still about getting them back in the lane of the focus on the one play at a time, the 1% climb, like everything just to try to get better. And that takes a lot of work. And so, you know, Mike's as good as there is in the business as far as redirecting our focus and making sure that we're focused on the little things and the details that it comes with and the work that needs to be done. And, um, you know, I think our players appreciate that. Um, but again, as you said, Aslan, they're 18 and 19, and they need that reminder every day. And, you know, I think just what's happening now out there, you know, with, with everything that we got to stand up for, right? Um, whether, you know, everything that's coming up right now. You know, we need to do a great job as we have always, but even more so nowadays of just making sure we're talking about the big things that are out there in this country, but at the same point, we're focused on the work, the details of what they're doing right now um, and being open-minded enough to be able to have the conversations about the unity we need in this country to dealing with the COVID implications that we have to deal with daily. I think it's all part of the education. And as educators, we can't be afraid to talk about those things, but also be detailed enough and be laser focused enough to deal with what's in front of us every single minute. So, I mean, that's the balance that we're all trying to have. And um, there's no better leader in this country than Mike Norvell.